Hi guys, how's it going? So today's episode we're going to be looking at this generator. Picked this up a couple of days ago. Basically the engine runs but is producing no output. There is zero power coming from the generator side of it. So I thought we'll take the back end a bit, see if we can see what's going on and hopefully get this thing running. Stay tuned. So a bit of backstory. The guy I picked this up off, he said he had it for three weeks. He bought it brand new. It worked fine. Then one day nothing would work. It would run but no power. So it is probably something to do with the back end, the generator side, which is back here. He did say that he took this cover off and he had a look down the back and couldn't see it out, so just sold it. Now, I've just noticed this one here is loose. No, this one here. One was loose, that one. So I think he might have been in this side, which isn't good news. This is your panel. And back here is the cover that goes on the panel. And it's loose so he's pulled this off by the looks of it and had a look inside and maybe just give up there yeah see this they're all loose didn't notice that when i <laughs> picked it up yeah so there's quite a few loose nuts he had it running so i'm not going to start it up and show you guys running because it, it, it does run and when i brought it back i started it and it did run i did try to rev the engine up by bypassing the governor uh, the voltage did not change. It just sat at zero. So there is zero. He says, I think he said there's 110 coming out, but I've never seen this even move whatsoever. So I think the generator is at fault. Okay, that was... The threads are stripped. There is nothing left on that. What is he doing with that? Get this off. Get this off a, a tray. Take that out before I lose it. <laughs> right. You can already see why he's missing there, which isn't a good. So that should be attached into there which it is not what do we have this is a switch and that is that is connected and that is grounded so that should be fine this is your circuit breaker and they're all attached into the circuit breaker this one is missing from l3 but that won't affect the output because that is only for this plug. These plugs in the voltmeter is attached. So that, that is the main thing basically. This is the voltmeter. This is going in and then, well, it's, it's coming out of the generator into the bottom and out the top. So when this switch is in the on position, the breaker, it's sending current, which is not. But the wiring Seems to be fine. I could put this back in L3, but that isn't going to really help me out. It's not going to make a make a difference. Other than the fact that that is a live wire <laughs> moving around inside, and this will be grounded, I believe. It's when you put a ball through and the frame is grounded. I imagine this will be grounded. So this touching, yeah, in fact, as you can see here, there's actually an F strap. So that is grounded. So yeah, we best put that back in. So I'm glad I didn't start it back up. Why are all these off? Like all the all the boots aren't even on. Every one of these uh, terminals here was loose. I put about three or four turns on. On this 380 block, every single one was loose, which is quite worrying. So I don't know what's happened. I don't know if that's just from vibrations maybe, or just poor design at the factory, poor quality control. I've put the boot back in the back of that as well. So I'm just going to double check that the breaker is working. So the breaker is off. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Put the breaker on. If that's okay, let's check the earths. So we're okay there. Why we just, yeah. 
here, so... Yep, that's fine. Right, let's get this put back on here. Just clips in, I believe. These holes have definitely been rounded out, which is a shame. Might have to put some new bolts through these because that is way too big. That'll do for now. So on the back end of the engine, and one thing that is worrying is that this is not inside of here. So this has been off. So, so he's obviously tried to fix it through the back end, which is it's a bit worrying because this should not be just loose. So let's get this off and let's see how bad it is. Right, so this down here, this is your automatic voltage regulator, your AVR. And I can see it's bulged. Now, basically this just protects your appliances. So if you, you have a drill and this is outputting too much current, rather than blowing your drill up, it blows this up. And that looks, I mean it could be the shape, but that to me does not look right. Also, this wire here, which goes to your panel, is not attached. So, that could be an issue. Looks pretty clean. I can't see any melted wires, which is which is always good. Now he's been in this, so he could have pulled this off actually. This actually might be unrelated. So But that be the case. In fact, yeah, this is unrelated because there's no cover. See these these terminals here have like a plastic sleeve that goes over. The sleeve is gone, it's missing. And it's not on the wire, it's not on the terminal, it is not inside here. So that should go on there like so. Everything else seems to be okay. Oh god. So the voltage regulator, this is your positive, and that has came off also. What is going on with this? This whole machine is just... So we came inside here and this was off and this was off. This is your positive from your voltage regulator. So that will not be helping things, but I don't... Is that melted wire? No. Has this been done when he's been inside? Because... <sighs> it's hard to tell. Yeah, so these are your bushes and these press down the back there on some rings and the rings are attached by some copper wire. I don't know if you can see. There's one on this side and one on that side and they are attached. Sometimes they come off. It's very rare, I've only ever seen that once, but if they come off, then the bushes will not be doing anything. So that's okay. I could pull the bushes out actually. That might be a... Tell you what, we'll pull this off as well. I'll remove this screw, we'll check the bushes, make sure they're okay. Uh, the rest of the wiring seems to be okay. That looks a bit suspect. That actually could be the problem also. Oh. This is your rotor, and this spins. This big coil of wire around the outside, that is your windings, and they are the most expensive part of the generator because you can pay someone to rewind them. But on this kind of generator, you would not. You would just junk it. You would reuse the engine. You wouldn't bother rewinding this. And the wines themselves, they come pretty much as a whole unit. You just got to put a few extra bits in, so it's much cheaper to go out and buy a new unit, unfortunately. But what I don't like, some of the string around the wines is melted. Just a tiny bit there. But the, the wire, the wine himself, look okay. I have seen these before where they've actually completely just died on me and they, they kind of melt. <laughs> you get like, a, like a, a gunk at the bottom. It's pretty clean in here, so I wonder if that is just a one-off 
get this voltage regulator out of the way. Uh, check behind there, that might have melted also, I'm not too sure. What do we have? Place your bets. Oh, it's nice and clean. This is, it's fine inside there. That's resin to make it waterproof, shockproof, all that good stuff. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's kind of, you can see on camera, but it's definitely a, a bump in the front there. And it's all cracked here. And the battery's kind of sticking up a bit here. That is usually when the resin is puffed up and expanded and it's cracked. So this is probably junk. Now, when these go, these are good because these are dead cheap. In fact, I might actually have one of these. What is it? Two to two, two, 2.5 kilowatt. This has failed. This could have failed because he's put something on this generator that was too powerful, too demanding, or it sent a surge of electricity and it's protected the equipment and blew this, which is likely. But the windings, the windings here have melted slightly. Sorry, not the windings, the string that goes around them. Now, that might just be because of heat in general. The exhaust is here, so that could be possible. This might have been running for maybe eight hours or so, and the heat has generated and melt the wire, so that would actually be a good... If that was the case, I'd be very happy about that. But if the windings have failed, they could have sent a surge of electricity to the regulator, and this could have blew it. So it still could be the windings, or it could have even been these wires. I mean, if one of these had grounded out, if this had touched the frame of the generator, that could have also been the issue. So there's quite a few things at play here. So I think I'll pull the bushes out. These normally jump out at you. Unless they're completely worn. <laughs> he said it's three weeks old, and if he's using it for eight hours a day, it's still not that old, to be fair. It should still have plenty of life left in it. Oh. There you go. So I've had a look, and I don't have one of these. I do have one, but it's a three to four kilowatt, and you want to put in very very close or even identical to what you've already got two to three kilowatt would be perfectly fine for this machine get them ordered and i'll get back to you guys once they've arrived and we'll try that and hopefully i'll fix it three week old machine i did not expect this to be gushing our fuel everywhere the seal is gone so i'll have to put a new seal in or just make me on seal so it is next weekend this is the original bushes that we've taken off the generator end and as you can see they are not rounded they're not smooth they're quite jagged I do believe there's a very good chance this actually snapped off. I don't think they've actually worn down because that is a circular ring. And the bushes themselves would have worn in a kind of moon shape. And that has not happened. It's quite rough, very uneven. So I think these are snapped, possibly. And with the bushes snapping inside, I wonder if that has somehow affected the regulator. So we have a new voltage regulator. And we have some new bushes so let's get these installed so these are the new bushes and as you can see they've got a, a kind of a round shape to them the voltage regulator has came and it is this guy here very similar it's a four pin so it's got the four pins here and this will be uh, your connections for your bushes now i'm guessing see the live basically when the bushes are in place like this on the left this is normally the live so in fact is it doesn't actually mention on there but it normally has yeah i don't think work it out but on the on the back here it's actually very hard to see but it's got a plus and a minus so this is positive this is negative the red would obviously go to the positive in this case i'm assuming it's the blue in the past i've picked these up they normally have a plus and a negative symbol on these but i haven't put one on so nice and cheap so this is a new one this is a ground here so if we go from there to the yellow which i believe is yeah so the yellow is ground on this one 
the white. This is the original one and the white should be the ground. Yeah. So red positive on the old one, which means blue is positive on the new one. So blue on the left, yellow goes on the right. So yeah, this black one here, I kind of just, I did this as a temporary measure. I think what we'll do, let's get some fresh wire on this. Should be better, so I'll get that put back in. Like so, everything else is connected still, which is good. That really should be like that. So, let's get the bushes in place. So, time for the regulator. Blue on the left. Yellow on the right. Just feed that under there if we can. Tidy all these wires up, shall we? So this guy needs to go in to there like so. So we have a new voltage regulator. We have new bushes. All these wires are connected and in place. It is earthed. As you can see, the thread has gone. So someone's over tightened these, or maybe it was done from the factory. I'm not too sure, but. That is junk, so I re tap these and put in a bigger bolt and it's pretty tight, it will not go any tighter. So I think this is ready to fire up and see if we get voltage. If we don't, then it is probably going to be the windings or the rotor. Power on, fuel on, we have choke. It's not generating the power that I should be generating, unfortunately. So, where does that leave us? I put on the old regulator and that produced nothing, which means the new regulator is actually doing something. So that is promising. It's actually generating some electricity. But I honestly think the issue is with the windings. I think there's a, t there's a tiny bit of damage here. I mean, minor, but it doesn't take much one wire breaks and the whole thing could go down. The engine's fine, the tank's fine, the frame's fine. So these are a few things, the exhaust. What you find with these Chinese engines is they're all pretty much the same. So what you'll probably find is this will fit a majority of other engines out there. One thing I've never done is actually remove a generator from one of these engines. Now, the reason is basically it's not worth it. I mean, these are cheap. You can pick these up 60, 70 pounds ready to go so why pull this off and replace it with a hundred pound generator when you know you can just go out and buy one it's fully working for much less than that so i've never actually really bothered i normally go for the ones where the engines won't start or well, there's a misfire or you know the, or the smoke and for example maybe the rings have gone they're the ones i normally go for i don't usually get this end well, that being said i like to learn when doing stuff so I think this might be a prime opportunity to actually remove this and see what's going on. Let's just have a little look at this. 
and I was thinking, all right, there'd be some bolts under here I need to remove. And then when I went to lift it up, he's tried his best to get this running again, maybe. The chances of them bolts vibrating the nut off is highly unlikely. The fact that these are removed suggests to me this entire unit has been out. I think I'll just pull this off, pull this off, yank that out and yeah let's have a look let's have a play about let's have a look and see what's going on inside this generator As you can see, the rotor is perfectly fine. It's a nice color, there's no burn marks, there's nothing loose, so that is good. Very happy about that, so that is fine. However, so regarding the windings, I don't know if you can work it out, but as you can see, that looks perfectly fine. Even color, no issues whatsoever. That is the rear. The front, however, we have this. Now, I don't know how well the camera will pick this up. Move the light over back. We have this nice copper color. And then on the front, it's this brown, horrible. It, it's bent out, guys. It's, it's shot. The wire itself is completely black and all this here is just loose. This should be nice and tight and it has melted away. In fact, it's not even attached there. See, it's just brittle and it's just snapping. And the wire itself is so dark. It's not that obvious from the front, but from the rear, compared to that, you can clearly see it's burnt. It is absolutely fried. This is where all the wires come out and connect up to the plugs. And as you can see, it is melted here. And more importantly, if you can see it down there, but it's all crusty and melted. It's black. And right there is melted plastic. So I think it's fair to say the windings are a fault. I mean, you can see the color difference here. That looks perfectly fine, but from the top, I should, from the side, I should say, it's burnt out. So what's happened? Well, this is my theory could be wrong the voltage regulator that goes in the front it does a lot of stuff but that primarily protects all this in theory so the little cheap five pound part if something was to happen if you had a surge of power if you plug something into this generator which was way too powerful or if you had something plugged in like a three or four thousand watt device and you start the engine it could cause damage to this. To protect this, the regulator itself goes. You replace the regulator and you're good to go. What's happened here, and I could be completely wrong, but the fact that the brushes, rather than looking like this and just wearing down naturally with a nice curve, they have completely snapped off. And they've got this rough surface. I think these may have snapped and if you can imagine the brushes are here I wonder and there's a fan at the back which blows air I wonder if the, the brushes themselves have snapped fallen down or somehow landed here and the heat or maybe contacting and grounding out has caused the damage so yeah possibly the brushes have broke grounded this out Cause damage to the winds, which in turn then blew the regulator, which means this guy is junk. I haven't looked, but I imagine something like this would be at least 30 to 50 pounds, maybe more, it could be a lot more, it could be 100 pounds, I'm not too sure. But replacing this, it's, it's just not feasible. 
This machine cost me £50, spent about £5 on this regulator and I picked up two of these and these were only four or five pounds for two. Nothing floating around inside of it, so the engine itself is, well, it's a good engine, but I can't really use it. This stupid adapter plate they've got here, it's just not usable. You, unless you're gonna use it with a, a generator, probably this exact same generator, you just can't use the engine. So I'm just about to wrap up the video. However, I just thought I'd bring you guys back and show what I found. Basically, after I finish video on all this, I've decided to strip it all down. I have drained the fuel tank that is now in storage containers. I have pulled the engine, removed the rotor and the windings. I have removed the oil, obviously, and drained the carb. Basically, just getting it all ready for storage. Just in there, there's a dent, and there's two or three wires that are jammed together. So if we check for resistance, so if I put one end down here, and then we touch this ring, we have resistance. If I go to, well, basically, if I go to anywhere in the wire, we have an open circuit, which is correct. You should not have any connection. However, if we go inside here and touch, as you can see, it's connected. What's basically happening here is that it is making contact and it is basically rendering this useless. So this is also at fault, surprisingly. So if we go directly to the rings, which is this ring and this ring, this is where the bushes would make contact and touch down, it is 25.5. Now, that might be correct for this roller. There is absolutely no stamping whatsoever. So is that an okay amount of resistance? I highly doubt if two bushes that were actually missing off this, they were not inside the engine. I think someone's been in and removed them previously, but I think they've just been tumbling around and I think they've made contact with multiple parts of the circuit and they've also caused damage. With this being a fault and the wines being a fault, these two parts ultimately are junk. The rope is actually fused. It's completely stuck to the actual wire. So I just thought that you guys know that I don't just give up that easily. I did actually try a few things after the fact. But with that in mind guys, let's bounce back to the original ending of this video. So I think I'll put this back together, put it on the shelf and use it as a donor. And I think I'm going to call this one here, guys. So, like always, thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Like always, please like, subscribe, comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>